one other secret she is doing her masters entirely free as well as her also entire masters for free how can you get your masters done for free you will feel jealous i guarantee you college sponsors you yeah. to make an international trip like my trip was sponsored to uk yeah. so they just advised me you can't just apply to the graduation position but if you shift a little ahead maybe to cal gardens or rockland apartments gunshots happen there sometimes mm. A month ago, I was in Washington D.C. and Maryland is very close to Washington D.C. So I decided to visit that state, and in that state, I decided to go to UMBC University, which is University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And obviously, I met the students who are studying there, doing their masters in different different fields, and they share their heart out what the life looks like at UMBC campus. So I hope it gives you value, and if it does, please let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know which next university would you want me to visit and. make a video on that and now i'll let you enjoy the episode what's up everyone i am in umbc campus and we have some friends over here i'm going to do a quick intro and we're going to do a campus tour and learn more controversial things about the umbc hello everyone i am nancy and i am a second year master student here hi guys uh, my name is hari and uh, i'm pursuing my masters in computer science so it's my third semester over here smriti hello everyone i'm smriti i'm doing my masters of science in information systems from umbc back in india i was working and then i decided to do my masters so i came nice. here hi everyone i'm aditi zoshi i am pursuing masters of science in computer science at umbc I did my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications. One other secret is uh, she is doing her master's entirely free. We'll talk talk more about that as well as her also entire master's for free. They both have teaching assistant and masters almost half price. So we're gonna talk about this. How can you get your masters done for free? You will feel jealous. I guarantee you. This building is arts building. Yeah, yeah. And there's an amphitheater here. But we, this was our meeting point, and now we are gonna go inside the campus. towards the engineering building and yes. all of that right we are now at the starbucks area and also university center where exactly what happens here this is the place where you would want to come on the very first day of your college i like be it your ids or be it anything to do with your immigration things you just have to come there and especially i would say the campus card nice that's that's what you get here yeah <laughs> so got it and then there is a starbucks and then all your i20s everything happens over yes, there i20 and campus card all the important yeah, things yeah opt cpt is yes, right. right so international department is over there yes, got correct. it okay cool all right now we're going to go this way yeah let's go already love this campus because there is a golden retriever over here let me show you golden retriever so that is golden retriever why is there is a golden retriever that's actually a retriever's bay chesapeake breed Okay. Uh, it's true grits. Uh this is our mascot. This is your baby. Nice. Mascot. Okay. Like Chico State's mascot is Wildcat. So this is Retriever is the mascot. Yeah. That is the place most of the fun will happen there. I am um, if you want to come here to gym. Yeah. Or swim. Yeah. Both are here. Okay, so that's like the rec activities yes, like activities. gym and all of that. All right. We are now in the rec which is the Retriever Center. Yes. This is like a gym. what happens here yeah, so you can come play here there's a basketball court and there's a badminton court just next to it nice and if you come here so if you go down the hallway you will see gym and on the ground floor there is a weight training center nice there is sort of like a yoga center just the extreme end there is a swimming area both okay. indoor and outdoor nice. so you can enjoy both career fairs and this retriever's activity center okay nice okay yeah. So looks like this is where the career fair happens. Yes. Have you attended it? Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. I have. Does the companies what kind of companies come? From? So, uh, we have companies from technology, healthcare, or uh, data science domain. Nice. Uh, so Do they hire international students? Yes, some. Oh, they do. Okay. Hire, but nice. Yeah, some of the companies are restricted to US residents. Yeah. Only, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean they have a lot of networking events going on here as well, mm. uh, and they have LinkedIn, Photoshop. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there are a lot of fun stuff. Nice. Yeah. So we just got out of the gym, and then there is an outdoor pool. Now I feel like a more a central area of yes. the campus. So we have a lot of food courts in the commons. We have game rooms. 
there are many graduate student clubs at the university which are uh, their offices are at yeah. that building Nice. Do you guys, I guess, celebrate any festivals? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Uh, recent, we have uh, Ekta, which is the Indian Student Association Club, and we also have uh, Hindu Student Clubs okay. and nice. South Asian Clubs. There oh, are a lot of clubs yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's everything is in that building. Yes. And then this is Life Science Building. Yes. And this is the Commons. Uh, we have bookstore. A lot of food courts and commons. We have student clubs nice. uh, at this building. Yeah, uh, I'm working in Chi Square Lab, uh, which is a research lab at UMBC. Nice. I'm primarily focusing on natural language processing. So, this is your third semester? Yeah, this is my third semester. Nice. So initially, I worked as a volunteer researcher for a couple of months. Yeah. And then I just got my professor rec uh, recommended me for the graduate assistant position. Nice. So this is how I got the position. Yeah. Here. I took like, I talked to a couple of seniors first. Yeah. So they just advised me, you can't just apply to the graduate assistant position. Yeah. So here, uh, the recommendation works. Yeah. So I just contacted the professor. I worked a couple of months as a voluntary researcher. Yeah. I didn't took any kind of money from him. Yeah. I just worked in his lab for a couple. So you just how did you reach out? Like just cold uh, email? Yeah, cold email and just uh, just uh, like he used to come to the classes yeah. and after the classes I used to meet him. So through that, uh, like I was working in the same domain as well nice. in past years. Yeah. Made it to the library. Do you guys spend time here? Yeah, I have spent a lot of time in the library. I used to come in the morning and then stay. Uh, yeah. Why not home? Day. So, because library has uh, many rooms which are very uh, private, yeah, so distraction can, free. Yes, you can nice. work. Uh, you I can focus on whatever you that's are doing. That's the best part, I believe. You can book the rooms, yes. reserve them beforehand, and yes. you can just get a private room for yourself. Mm. Right. Which, of course, when you are living with a couple of students and you are sharing rooms, you might have privacy problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you and your roommates might have yeah. different times. Yeah. So mm. this, this is your go-to place yeah. for study. Yeah. So right now, like I'm uh, working as a teaching assistant at the academic success center. So most of my time goes in the office. But before that, so you uh, have your own office? Oh uh, yes. What? <laughs> that, that is so cool. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and what happens in the lab? What do you guys do? Uh, Mainly the research thing, like the professor used to give so us professor the has its own research yeah. and then he tells you like, yeah. hey. Uh, it's his lab actually. Oh, it's his lab. It's okay. His lab. Nice. nice. Mm. One pro tip of joining a lab, a funny thing, but if you, if your paper gets accepted and it's an international location, call it sponsors you yeah. to go make an international trip. Oh. So I, like my trip was sponsored to UK. Oh, so very nice. I spent a week there. At an amazing and everything trip. paid for. Paid Wow, I see a nice pawn here. You guys come spend time here? Sometimes. Sometimes. You Sometimes. Yeah. Doing some deep thinking? Not deep thinking, like kind of uh, chit chatting. Chit chatting. So, and so campus is safe? Yeah, it's safe. safe. It's safe. 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 Okay. I have had stayed a lot of late nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just found out that this campus is 538. Yeah. 538 acres. So big, so massive. Have you seen all of it? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> only the IT part and that's the, the oh, Yeah, yeah, it's massive. GMU campus, which we did, was 100 acres. This is five times bigger. Wow. Let's start with cost of living, because I feel like it's very important for people to know how much they're going to spend. Exactly. So what is the like typical cost of living here? So starting with the rent, like it goes around $270 uh, per head if you share the room by uh, five people mm. and uh if you uh and hundred dollars would go for utilities like bg and all yeah uh, other stuff the yeah. water bill like electric the electric water and, yeah. and gas yeah, yeah. and uh the groceries would be around 200 mm. per head okay and yeah and other for entertainment or for movies like for other restaurant stuff yeah. like you can keep hundred dollars right so 600 ish it yeah sounds yes. like 600 yes. is like and yeah. is that five people like sharing the room or personal bedroom uh no personal bedroom like two people sharing <laughs> one room if you do a personal bedroom like i have my own room so yeah. i give around 6 30. oh one wow room. For okay because the so there are two famous places you can live nearby one is the westland gardens and another is the maiden choice apartments okay so this used to be the primary choice yeah but just last year, a lot of people came and people started finding places in Carroll Gardens. 
और माउंट रिज एंड रॉक रॉक अपार्टमेंट सो दे आर लिटिल फार फ्रॉम द कॉलेज बट बस बस ऑफिस इज देयर इफ आई टॉक अबाउट वेस्ट लैन देन द रेंट इज अराउंड ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड टू थर्टीन हंड्रेड फॉर द एंटायर टू बी एच के इट्स अ टाउन हाउस सो देर आर टू रूम्स roughly 600 but if you want like lavish lifestyle yeah. or personal stuff then it can go up to like $1000 or so yeah what about f1 visa interview is it like pretty much like uh because you guys are going umbc they are like congratulations your visa yeah. is approved yeah for me it was just a two second interview like <laughs> literally yeah, that's okay. it uh, like he just asked me like mine was in delhi consulate yeah. and he just asked me which university that's it Okay. okay that's it. that's it. Okay. <laughs> no other question mine was a very wow. funny interview uh he didn't even ask me any questions really but i spent around 20 minutes in the interview because he was curious about the place i did my undergrad college from and i did from nagaland mm. and he was just curious to know how the place is, mm. looks like mm. what people do there and mm. he had just a casual oh, discussion so it's more like yeah chit chat like. chit chat nice. okay <laughs> that's cool yeah. uh, how about yours Yeah, I had a similar experience. My interview was at the Mumbai consulate. Right. Nice. Uh, the visa officer just asked me which university, what was my undergrad GPA, and uh, like some questions about funding. But that's it. It was a very easy one. Nice. <laughs> But one thing I'll tell about the visa interview, like the uh, uh, the person was so nice. He said, "We know it's a." bit of crime there but remember we are always there for you oh, <laughs> so right, like let's talk about this crime thing because i've heard this multiple yes. times baltimore has some issues yes. with crimes but is it safe for students the crime it really depends for instance if you are in the college then it's 24/7 safe nothing will happen the yeah. umc police department it's right, right across there and police do patrolling you yeah but if you're living in westland and made in choice it's pretty safe because that's the indian community and maybe some iranian students mm. and there are there is an entire lane which is mostly occupied by chinese people so they are nearby but if you shift a little ahead maybe to kal gardens or rock lane apartments gunshots happen there sometimes mm. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, we we haven't heard uh, but uh, we listen like uh, we got a news like yeah like at a particular time it was happening mm. yeah something oh, kind okay. of like so i would say that try to avoid certain places you could always reach out to a senior and ask which place is safe and mm. usually it's the neighborhood you live mm. in like mountain apartments are pretty safe because yeah. people there are different people who are living yeah. spanish mexican yeah. indians yeah. like a bunch yeah. of but i would say in the last one year things mm. have changed a lot because mm. students have occupied places far mm. away and i would say they have become pretty safe now mm. No. What about uh, how do people like find apartments? So I would say apartments. dot com, uh, as well as we can go on Zillow, mm. uh, and uh, we can give them a call or we can try emailing them a bunch of times because. uh i would also like to highlight one thing uh because of the pandemic and everything the jobs uh the remote jobs are increasing so some of the times uh people who are already staying in those apartments uh if they get a remote job uh, then the they apartment won't, won't uh right yeah. yeah so i would say uh you can also reach out to seniors uh, mm. to understand where to live and mm. which apartments can so don't book it on your own yeah. obviously yes. you find something reach out to yes. seniors and yeah. then ask them is this safe area seniors yeah. are yeah. very very helpful i would say like they really help you they'll make they'll ensure that you find the place mm. so they won't leave you anywhere in the middle right <laughs> so yeah that, but don't i would say like not make a decision mm. without knowing Where yes, you are booking exactly, yeah. and there is a transit uh, like the UMBC has a transit bus, and we have to take our apartment in the transit route itself. Yeah. Mm. Like if you take uh, some of the students took a home in Towson, which is too far from, mm. and only the local transit is available, mm. and not the UMBC transit, mm. and it's not that safe mm. to travel from the local transit over okay. here at yeah. night or yeah. evenings. Yeah. So. Okay, um, something I'm really curious about is. Uh, uh on campus jobs because obviously all three of you have one and okay. nice ones and the pay is obviously is very interesting part of it so one how like are there on campus jobs and two what kind of on campus jobs so we'll start with you yeah. sure 
Uh, so there are a lot of on-campus jobs available, mm. but at the same time, because the reach of UMBC programs is increasing, the incoming students are increasing. Mm. So, uh, I so would... are you saying we should not publish this video? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> of course, uh, there are a lot of opportunities, yeah. and uh, you would get one eventually, mm. if not right in the first semester. As you as you know, like we all three have uh, ca- on-campus jobs. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what is your on-campus job? ITA is a little different than uh, the normal uh, course TA at the CS department. Why is it different? Uh, so, um, I'll tell you a story about uh, how I started that job at the, okay. uh, for the uh, yeah. uh, in my last semester. Yeah. Uh, so, I was working as a graduate assistant at the Academic Success Center. So, ASC at UMBC, uh, it has tutors uh, to tutor undergrad and some of the grad courses mm. uh, so i was working as a graduate assistant uh, so my main responsibilities are uh, shortlisting tutors from the students oh, list wow. hir- assisting in hiring them nice. Uh, arranging their so do schedules. people butter you up as like hey please <laughs> I, I would say yes <laughs> nice, okay. but yeah, yeah. Uh, I assist in hiring and wow. uh, basically managing the computing mm. success center at the U- at the ASC mm. uh, so yeah yeah and because you are TA position mm-hmm. do you get the benefit like the research assistant people like giving yes. off the tuition fees. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So oh. Uh, I have my tuition fees waived off. Uh, entire. I'm, entire. What? Yes. <laughs> oh wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I've also got. That is so cool. <laughs> I have also got the health insurance from the university, so I don't pay for my health insurance. So you're doing well. masters for free. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can right. say that. Okay. My name is Smriti, and currently I'm doing my masters in information systems. In India, I had an experience. Uh, I had a different experience in government firm, and nice. so I thought I should change my field. So I'm here, yeah. doing my masters. And what was your background? Uh, actually, I have did. Uh, uh, bachelor's of uh, technology in computer science okay uh, yes nice. uh, and then i was working for an it firm for a year and after that uh, i went to a government firm yeah. so i had a different experience yeah. i was working there for 5 years mm, yeah. okay you you said you are like shy but doesn't feel like <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, all right and you just came from your on campus job uh, yeah. So you were busy there. Um, we were all chatting and saying nice things. They are all from computer science and you are from information system. Yeah. And they hyped up uh, the tuition fees thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's just clarify a little bit. Uh, so you have the same job as she has. Yeah. Uh, which is, yeah. But she has she the has... partial thing that she get entire tuition fees waived off. Yes. She get health insurance waived off. And she gets stipend, yeah. but you don't have the same no. thing. No, in uh, information you systems. You feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, sometimes I feel that I did mistake. I should have chosen uh, computer, computer science. science yeah. <laughs> yes, because they have a lot of funding, and we we don't have that much uh, funding. Yeah. So I was working as a grader in previous semester also, mm. uh, and I was not having any part uh, part time assistantship back yeah. then. But now they have offered me a. Thankfully, they have offered me a part-time assistantship and nice. an in-state uh, yeah. waiver. Yeah. So it's because of the department. Since even though you are doing the same job, yeah. because of the department, you don't have the yes. same. But yes. do you have the health insurance? No. No health insurance. No also. health okay. insurance. So, what's in? What is your credit fees per credit? Is it thirteen hundred or is it more? Uh, per credit, yes, it is thirteen hundred. Okay. And then in state is six hundred or so. Yeah, in state it is eight hundred or so. Eight hundred or so. Okay, got it. So, so your total fees because of this job would be fifty percent or so. Uh, sixty percent. Sixty percent. Okay. Yes. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, uh, that's good to clarify because if they come for computer science, then yeah, you might have the luxury of yes. three masters, but. Uh, for information system, do you know about data science? Do they also have the same partiality or uh, they are in some your Some people, some <laughs> of my friends, uh, they have part-time assistantship like us. Yeah. But it 
it is they have less opportunities so i would they say they have less opportunities yes, then okay. then i was. but do they have the same funding like computer science or do they have they have less funding less funding okay yes. lesser they have than you guys different criteria for mm. getting into the ta okay. thing because i think they need 4.0 gpa and in information systems i don't think that is a criteria mm. for getting a ta okay yes. and how did you get the job uh i was working under a pro- uh, i was actually studying under a professor he he knew me and i you used to sounds like cold emailing uh, looking up online uh, in her case she, you looked up online and in your case uh, i mean yours was special case because <laughs> you just got it uh, and then your case was also like sounds like cold emailing volunteering so cold emailing referrals uh, yeah. are the key yes. to do so if the students who are coming for spring or for fall yes. they should reach out to you guys and ask for recommendations and yes i i feel referral also works uh, in my case also i had a friend mm. and yes. fact, you know in umbc most of the things work on referral mm. recommendations like that is that is the key yeah there are many factors like your gpa your profile your background yes. but i think referral or recommendations come at the top of the list mm. then other things start rolling okay. if you don't have a recommendation you have to be super lucky right yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> and the recommendation comes because you have made relationship yes. with your professors uh, seniors, seniors professors, professors, professors friends okay. and after that they see our resume they'll take interviews okay yeah. yeah so don't slack up on not making network yeah, yeah. that's is- why even I've, you probably have seen in my videos i've said it uh, but yeah. now when you guys have experienced it you would agree yeah. networking yeah. is the key yes yeah. one of the things i didn't ask uh, them and now that you guys talked about networking everyone talks about networking a lot but how what do we mean by networking and how can people start in networking like is it just reaching out to them how do you build relationships so i would say you have to be more of a strategic person when you network mm. so you just don't go and randomly network with people supposedly you see a person first of all before even reaching out to a person have a look at the profile for example if you're reaching out to a professor have a look at the research they are doing what is in what is you know really interesting to them because people connect with you better when you share a common goal and if you don't share a common goal they'll just forget you the next thing they move mm. out mm. but when i reached out to my professor i was really interested in his research work even though i completely did not understand what is exactly doing i reached out to him saying that i want to do it and your tone i would say has to be more empathetic you have to be you know you have to have a self belief in yourself first of all yeah. especially when you're reaching professors or dean or any other person because if you don't believe yourself how would the other person yeah, yeah, yeah. so i am little counter to that uh I am more relationship based like I don't strategize that oh this person is going to be very interesting for my I'm like genuinely interested like in your case like you know I'm meeting with you guys uh there's no strategy behind it for me it's like relationship is what matters to me so I am going to focus I'm genuinely interested in learning more about them so uh but that is a good point yeah different ways of networking yeah yeah so i i am specifically saying in the context of helping you find an assistant right. or a job right true true yeah, then yeah, in that yeah, case it yeah. really do matter yeah 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 so, yeah what about for me the, i think it's natural i meet people i make friends uh, the people whom i see they are experienced or they are in the field i just talk to them say hi and but do you feel like nervous uh, because there are a lot of introverts uh, yeah um they might not feel confident enough that yeah what am i going to say like what, what do i say so do you feel that uh in one to one conversation i am an introvert and i feel very very under confident as i i came here and i was in a government field and now i am uh, getting back to it so sometimes yes i feel very nervous when i am in front of lot of people but in one to one conversation i think i am more comfortable mm. so i try to do network through one to one communication nice okay so, yeah yeah and when you do feel nervous what is your strategy to overcome that nervousness 
just do it yeah just do it <laughs> when you feel nervous i think i we should do it more yes. even when i was coming here i had to sit with you uh, maybe you'll take me in the vlogs and <laughs> i was feeling nervous and i was overthinking but i i thought i should do it yeah yeah, yeah. i'm glad you're doing it I, you know, don't don't come across shy at all so you just practice makes the man perfect yeah what about you guys do you guys have different opinion uh, so i would say i have a mix of what nancy and you have so um, especially when reaching out to seniors i usually go to their linkedin profiles mm. i see if we have any similar experience that mm. we can connect with mm. uh, if yes then uh, i would like to connect with them uh, by to talk more about that and to learn from there mm. to, from them Uh, and, and so the approach is like you found a senior. Yeah. In this case, let's say it's me. Yeah. You then you do a cold message. Yes. Like hey, Yuri, I uh, like like whatever. Like you, I saw that you were doing into this, this, yes. this, and then yes. you. I would love to connect with right. you. Right. And then, out of ten, maybe one person will respond yes. back to you. Right. So in my case, I respond like, hey, nice yes. to meet you, Aditi. Right. Like, right. Uh, let me know if I can help you. Yes. But some people will say that. Some people will just ignore. Ignore it. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I would say instead of. Like, don't ever send uh, connection requests without, without messages. Yes, please, <laughs> yes. And even the messages should not be generic messages to everyone. Yeah, I, yeah, like I copy feel, pasting. Yeah, that, yeah, I feel if you like put in some, some efforts, effort, yeah. then the other person yes. is going to yeah. put in those efforts yes. because uh, if you feel if you if you uh, like copy and paste template messages yeah. to yeah. everyone, then you the other person mm. will not. Uh, respond back yeah, to you yeah. because even you are not putting right. the yeah. efforts that are required. This is the case even when you are applying for a company. Yeah. And when when reaching out to professors, I would say do something in their research area if you are really interested mm. in instead of just going and exactly. saying, "Hey, I am yeah. interested yeah, yeah, yeah. in working yeah. for that." That is very because, good point. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone is going to do the same, and if you want to stand out, then I would say do something. Yeah. Put in more efforts yeah. before reaching out. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. they would understand that you yes. really care about yeah. the work yeah. that they are doing. Yeah, Smriti. Uh, another question. These people have already answered this, but now I'm excited to know from IS perspective. Uh, was it worth it for you, or like in terms of like, do you feel? Your fees and everything is it worth it? Or now that you have done three semesters, you're like, I think I would be better off some other university. No, I think uh, it is very bu- budget friendly and the course structure it is good. We have yeah. three tracks: artificial intelligence, data science, and uh, user design experience. So uh, I think it is worth it uh, yeah. according to cost perspective. and even according to getting part times mm. because it is important for us even i was searching for something that i should get at least part time yeah so that my living expenses uh, covered yeah so i think it is worth it right yeah. yeah yeah okay cool yeah their answers was obviously they all said worth it i mean yeah. why would they like they all <laughs> study for free so <laughs> but no it was uh, that's why i wanted to had another opinion like yeah uh, is it worth it because of the tuition fees or is it worth it because of the coursework and the flexibility and, or is it because all of it all of it all of Co- it course yeah. structure is also good yeah we yeah. have three tracks and right. i i am doing a data a specialization yeah, yeah, in data yeah. science so yeah. i think it's nice good. okay so and then before you join i asked them this question you would do differently now that you have passed three semesters like i wish i would have done it this little differently so we'll start with if you have answer yeah. now okay so <laughs> yeah. so one thing is the job application process like mm. i would have started pretty early yeah. here in the united states the timing is very important mm. once the role get open and once the role gets open like you have to apply as soon as possible yeah. if you make any like time to decide okay i will just apply after 10 days after 5 days the yeah. role will be filled yeah for sure yeah so the timing is very important yeah. like uh, and start applying for internships before coming to us <laughs> yeah that's what i say yeah like, you in know, your video itself yeah, like yeah. i started applying yeah. from yeah. there itself. Yeah, yeah. so before coming to us yeah. so that is the one advice mm. i would like to give and yeah. yeah yeah okay cool do you know, do you feel differently or do you feel like you would not do anything differently i mean i'm a firm believer of destiny before coming here have some clarity mm. it's not something like 
I would do differently, but it's more like a an advice from yeah. how I have seen things turned out. Yeah. So have some sort of clarity, especially if you're coming to UMBC. Decide whether you want to choose a path which is more research oriented or more like you know coding oriented, software development. Hmm. If you more project oriented, more project oriented, yeah. and if you still want to be like a data analyst or data scientist, I would say. Uh, try to have a co-op opportunity maybe people might not really be aware about co-op opportunities but they do happen here mm. especially i like i know at least 10 to 12 people who have a co-op so co-op is something which you can do for a six months period with a company so data scientists or data analyst positions especially when in baltimore there are companies who will give you that mm. and i would say even if it's a data analyst position or a data scientist position do it but take the first semester to maybe explore mm. of what you really like mm. because you don't know your first semester time will really shape mm. how you're going to lead your life so try that first semester in exploring mm. second semester be more serious mm. into doing what you think about mm. third semester is really the decision yeah. decision time nice. you have to decide what you want to do now yeah so, cool yeah awesome what about you would you do anything differently? Uh, so I would uh, like to talk about from switching to CS from mm, and Yeah, because you come from yeah, EXS. Yes, yeah. so I have done my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications. And even if I had an experience uh, back in India after my mm. graduation, the coursework that you do, it is very intense. Mm. Um, and I would say <laughs> professional experience is very different than academic courses. Yes, yes. So I would say if anyone is uh, coming from a different, like a non-CS background, um, I would say try to look at the courses and the uh, ba basically the core CS fundamental concepts uh, mm. very early before coming mm. here so that you you do not feel very overwhelmed. So uh, once you get an admit, make a decision, yes. start yes. Practicing, practicing those uh, skills yes. before At coming. least try to have a good understanding of the fundamentals yeah. so that you will be able mm. to do good yeah. and advanced topics. Yeah. So <laughs> you wouldn't be spending your time here figuring but those out yes, you can yes. spend that time in job search yes, and internship right, search right yes nice. that's a good advice yeah. <laughs> cool what about you would you do anything differently i also think that developing our skills from india is far better than coming here and struggling because i've seen a lot of time gets wasted in cooking because we don't have yeah. that experience there <laughs> we don't cook ourselves yeah, and we are, like we are so handling all yeah. the finance and everything so all the time gets and in classes also so i think we should uh, uh, get we should develop our skills so that uh, we can focus more on uh, applying jobs and mm. getting a good internship and mm. co-op yeah yeah nice okay and final question is what's the common mistakes you have seen people make uh, when they come to united states it doesn't have to be umbc but it can be umbc to be specific so I would say uh, people are not really sure of whether do, whether they want to do uh, research mm. or uh, they want to focus only on their courses and job search yeah. because the opportunities here are very, uh, I would say, vast. Yeah. So because we, uh, the competition is also very overwhelming. So yeah. we sometimes try to uh, see if like if, mm. if this is working out, if mm. that is working out and we might not put an effort into mm. a very specialized, like a very specific path. So mm. I would say instead of do, doing that, uh, maybe try to figure out what you really want to do and mm. focus on that path from day one and mm. eventually you'll be... Yeah, so have sense of clarity yeah. of what, what you, you want to do, do with yes. your career in general. Yes. Yeah, 100%. And then a lot of time when I've gone to India for my meetup, uh, when I ask them like, what is the career that you want to go? Like, I want to get into something tech and something management. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a desire, but not <laughs> right. necessarily like a clear answer yes. because there's so many different roles that right. can get you the same result. So right. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Any other common mistakes you've seen people making? So the people like the students after coming here, like they focus on to get the part time jobs. Mm. Like, yes. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like a lot of my friends, like even me as well. Yeah. Like uh, to get a job anywhere, it, mm. like 
obviously money is important yeah. okay we know but equally the coursework and the skill improvement is also important mm. for getting a job mm. that is the main thing mm. so some people tend to forget that what is the main aim of coming mm. to us right. mm. yeah. i 100% agree with them people are so crazy even if it if you have to just work at the dining and they just pay you about 12 dollars per hour they will be like going crazy and spending 5 hours there but really you forgot i actually completely agree with him mm. so yeah yeah i've said the same thing yeah. before um prioritize your part time yes, or on yeah. campus jobs like if it is ta ra ga because that's going to help you with your tuition fees exactly. so yes absolutely do it then comes these on campus like jobs which are yeah. related to your career uh, then like sometimes you can get web developer or yeah. student analytics department etc do those because they will help you with your profile mm. any physical labor job you might want to start thinking yeah. is it can you invest the same energy yeah. and time into yeah. building your profile exactly. and portfolio yes, exactly. versus making that $600 right now because you'll make yes. way more money once you get the full time job yeah. so yeah, yeah. nice cool any any other last tips wisdom words of wisdom mm. people coming to you so should people come to umbc yeah definitely <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely yes. okay yes. Uh, nice uh, <laughs> if, if it was comparison between umbc and umcp or which one would you choose obviously it i would choose UMCP. umcp because <laughs> i attended their hackathon like a uh, couple of months back like yeah. it was crazy like okay. obviously it is top ranked university mm. and like it's very good okay like, i'll i'll give you a perspective <laughs> <laughs> you like umbc right no, i'll give you a perspective yeah. um if someone i mean i don't really think so someone will make a decision between umbc and umcp they know what to do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. the ranking yeah. says a lot right all i could say is that but is it sorry is there a fi- price difference between both of them uh might be i think so might be yeah little yeah. bit not so significant not so significant but okay yeah. but if your profile is worthy of umcp you won't come to umcp okay got it so there is that is significant yeah. difference significant, significant like if difference. someone got in an admit from umcp they are comparing you with like they columbia, might, columbia or like uh, other nyu or nyu like yeah bigger exactly. universities like the, versus yeah okay, if gotcha. someone has from umcp they might have as well from stanford okay. or harvard so or that was a wrong question <laughs> <laughs> got it sorry <laughs> but apart from that i'll tell you one thing a very very specific type of people will come to umbc only when a professor they want to work with is working mm. here only in those scenarios they they might want to mm. shift here got it and i have seen a couple of professors of course umcp has very good professors but there is a certain research which only umbc is focusing and umcp is not yeah. in those kind of scenarios those that can be a distinguishing factor okay Nice. Not in terms of ranks. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't know. So, so yeah. yeah sure. It's a very good research university. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of opportunities from NASA. Hmm. So yes. if people want to do research, then this obviously exactly. is the place to be. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and the professors are highly skilled. Like yes. they yes. come from like, they have a huge uh, footmark in like the research side. Yes. Many yes. professors have their own companies. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. again, I I know I am keep asking this question again, but like, take yourself back two years uh, before you decided to come to UMBC. Now you already know the future. Like you have you are here. Mm-hmm. Would you still choose UMBC uh, when you had the comparison like your list of other universities, or would you choose different university? Uh, depending like on the location, like I would prioritize the location first. What other admits did you have? Uh, I had a Northeastern, but a different branch. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so i was a bit skeptical like okay whether i have to choose that or yeah. this like yeah. the fees was higher yeah. and the branch was completely yeah. different yeah and uh, yeah i could have gone there but i don't know but like, now you know the future yeah, so would you still I'm, choose yeah still uh, okay. still i would Got choose it. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For sure yeah. same Because, about you guys or would you have chosen now that you know like behind the scenes you know what's going to happen so if i tram- time travel mm-hmm. you to 2 years back you're like Okay, it's time to choose a university. Do you think you still choose uh, UMBC? So uh, I had admits from ASU, uh, Arlington, mm-hmm. and Northeastern as well. Uh, I might have chosen ASU because of the ranking, but I got that admit a little late because uh, 
even though umbc has very good opportunities but i feel sometimes the ranking uh, does matter. play uh, a crucial role let me tell you this uh, people i went to asu mm-hmm. i met 50 plus students mm-hmm. none of them said that they would choose your asu really? when i asked them this okay. question <laughs> that if they get a chance again to choose asu oh, okay. nobody said yes <laughs> because uh, they struggle to get into classes mm-hmm. uh, like 6 am they are like they launch the class and oh, everyone yeah. is packed I'll up i watched that on your yeah. video yeah. too oh, yeah <laughs> yeah they release the class and within like seconds everyone uh, is booked out so they don't get the chance no even class. if this happens for here yeah yeah, yeah well. the same so, in yeah, this same uh, like uh, it happens with the same yeah the difference is on only the population like yeah. there are only one uh, 150 students right and yeah 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 and they thought that uh, ASU's brand mm-hmm. is going to get them like jobs and all that's they don't think it's true okay. uh, they also felt um like it's way too expensive and they could have gotten to cheaper university as well so um so yeah so it's like a good perspective yeah maybe we <laughs> took the right decision yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even i don't think yeah. that ranking or university matters i've seen many people i've seen many friends who have graduated from a very low ranked university and they are in a very good position good. because of their skills, skills. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah so yeah focus on building skills and skills. your portfolio yes. Yes. because right. that's what's going to get you and then networking obviously yeah. yeah yeah all right that was uh, very powerful and insightful thank you for doing this until our next one keep smiling keep my smiling friend. keep hustling i hope this podcast was valuable if you enjoyed this i guarantee you you are going to enjoy this video which is going to be even more powerful and help you in your journey